you know me, I like to find something that others on the lake may not be using. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. In the last several weeks, we have covered a ton of different topics for fall fishing, including windy conditions, slick, calm conditions, what happens when the weeds are gone. Well, today I wanna go over a lure that is often forgotten. And what I love about it so much is that it can cover the entire water column from the top to the bottom quickly without tying other things on. And that particular lure is a bait fished colored tube jig. I like to first pick a tube that is some sort of bait fish color. We know that the bass are keyed in on minnows and shad, that type of thing in the fall. As a matter of fact, as I was setting this up, there are just minnows being busted all over this bay out here. So these are two colors that I really like. And of course, I'll put all the links and stuff down below in the description. But the real key to this is making sure that you use an insert tube head. And there's several reasons for that. The first being is that the action I feel is much more natural than a, let's say when you've got like a Texas rig with the worm weight, pulling it down at a straight angle. That insert tube head gives you a lot more flexibility as an angler on the type of presentations that you do. Now there's three presentations that I do with the tube in the fall. And I went out yesterday and was going through some of these different things. As a matter of fact, two of the presentations worked really well. One of them did not. So let's jump right into the first one. Like I mentioned earlier, what I love so much about fishing a tube jig is no matter what is in front of me, what situation presents itself, I can cover it with this particular lure. The only thing maybe I couldn't do, of course, is to throw it into super heavy brush because it does have an exposed hook. But just about any situation I run across, this particular setup will work. So the first one is going to be swimming the tube. Now, a lot of people don't really realize or haven't practiced swimming a tube. This is such an effective presentation. It, it's kind of like you have to think about it, maybe like using a big glide bait, just that nice, easy, slow movement through the water. Now the tube doesn't sashay side to side, of course, as much as a glide bait does but it just really comes through the water very nicely. The tentacles do a good job of, an, of adding some action to it. And it really looks like a minnow that's just kind of not paying attention and gliding along. So when I see things like some submerged weed beds or maybe some brush that's down there and I can go ahead and swim this just right over the top of it, so nice and easy. I like to throw it along the side of docks and bring the, the tube just right below the floating portions of the dock. And the key when you're swimming this is to reel it slow enough where the tube doesn't roll. When you've got an insert tube head, if you go too quickly, the tube will oftentimes like to roll on the way back and that's not what we want. So real slow enough where that tube just glides through the water really nicely, very effective presentation. And if you're out and all of a sudden the wind completely stops, you could consider that a finesse type of a presentation. It works well for me year in and year out. The next one or the second presentation I like to do with the tube, and this is what I fully intended to do yesterday when I went out, but it wasn't working on this particular day. And that is just letting it spiral down. I planned on hitting every dock piling, every piece of you know stand up brush, whatever that was out there, and just let that tube spiral down. For those of you that have fished a tube in the past with insert tube heads, you know what a wonderful like dying minnow type of an action that it is works really, really well. But like I said yesterday, that's not what they wanted. They either wanted it swimming, which was our number one presentation, or this is the one that worked really well. They wanted our third presentation, which was cracking a tube. Now I had a video in the spring that talks about Mark Zona's cracking a tube style. Just a really fun presentation 
and it works it just really really works now I'll link to that video down below and put it at the end as well and that covers all the details of this particular method but really what it comes down to is letting the tube sink to the bottom and once it's on the bottom on a slack line this is the key on a slack line go ahead and just keep bouncing the tube it's like you're cracking it off the bottom you don't want a taut line because that moves the tube way too much you want it on a slack line so it just hops and bounces just a few inches off the bottom very very effective and yesterday this is what the fish wanted probably 80 percent of the fish that i caught came on this cracking a tube method now, kind of the interesting part to this, it's not a traditional hook set. As a matter of fact, a bite feels kind of strange. It's almost like you got a little bit of weed on there or, or some debris hanging up on your hook. You're just gonna feel a slight bit of weight on there. And when you feel that, you don't want to just give it your traditional hook set, just reel down, maintain pressure. The fish oftentimes really eat this particular tube well when it's presented like this and if you just maintain pressure on them you've got them you they're going to come back to the boat hooked up when you've got that extra slack line in there if you just really rear back you can almost create too much of a, a snap which is going to rip that bait right out of their mouth so it takes a little bit of practice but once you feel something strange or a little spongy, just reel down and maintain pressure and you're going to be in good shape. Very, very effective. Let it sink, crack it, bounce it around. Go ahead and pull it forward a little bit. Let it sink and go ahead and crack the bait some more. Now, yesterday we had some slight chop on the water and it was just windy enough that the fish were a little more active than what I was anticipating, which would make sense why a slightly more aggressive presentation was the ticket yesterday afternoon when I was out. Now, for me personally, when I fish a tube, I like to fish it on a casting rod. As a matter of fact, a medium heavy power rating, something that would be considered your normal jig rod. And I like that because no matter what I run across, I am more accurate with a casting rod and bait cast reel than I am with spinning equipment. But this method, the swimming, the spiraling down and the cracking a tube all works really well on spinning gear as well. So if that's what you prefer, you're gonna be in good shape. But I would suggest a medium heavy power rated rod just to give you a little more backbone when you're especially using the cracking a tube method since it's down down there on the bottom. Speaking of the cracking a tube, if you would like to watch the video that goes into full detail about this method, go ahead and check this one out right here. And hey, make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.